principal of curriculum and instruction and uh, from there, I don't know. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Okay, who's next? I'll go. Okay. My name is my name is Katie Lynn McNeese. I am from a small town of Franklinton. I teach um, at Angie in Angie. Um, I teach third grade. We are a um, a low income school. We have free. Every kid has free lunch. Um, I my goal is to be a literacy coach within the next ten years. Um, my principal also was one of the ones that had pushed for me to come, but this was also a goal of mine of just putting forth time. I have a my oldest is in fourth grade and my youngest is in kindergarten. He'll be graduating in a couple of weeks. Um, but that's about it. Great, glad to have you. We definitely need good literacy coaches and teachers. Thank okay. you. Who's up next? I'll, I'll go. go. Okay. <laughs> I'll go. Um, my name is, uh, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, go right ahead. Uh, my name is Mitty Adams. Uh, currently, I teach in Jefferson Parish, um, live in Metairie, right outside of New Orleans. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I co-teach um, English, so I have a, a block where I, I do English, so I do all the lesson plans and stuff, but I'm also the ESL department head at my school of about 600 um, students and a third of those are classified ESL. Um, so on top of the 2025 testing they just did, we just wrapped up the end of year ESL testing. Mm -hmm. um, I hope, I, I wanna take this degree and I see myself maybe being an assistant principal, um, but um, I think I told you in my last class, Dr. Johnson, you know, I got my MBA from LSUS Mm -hmm. back in 2006 and I really lean more towards the operation side so mm -hmm. I'm hoping to maybe combine the two and move to central office and do something in that budgeting and but I'll know exactly where that money needs to go yes in schools so awesome okay. uh, my best friend um and uh we both worked in Dallas as principals and she went to Fort Worth and became their assistant superintendent for operations and she was so good at it even after she retired they bring her back now as a consultant to continue mm -hmm. to do that so not a lot of people think about operations we all tend to go more towards curriculum instruction and those kind of things but if we don't have strong operations people at central office our, our literally our districts and schools fall apart so i'm glad you're thinking about that Mitty. that's awesome yes ma'am okay who's up next i'll go okay my name is andy pizzo i teach in the east baton rouge parish school system uh i'm the band director over at sherwood middle academic magnet school uh actually had had some kids. Uh, we were in Lafayette today at a competition, so it's been a long day. Yeah, uh, I bet. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I foresee going through this track. I'm in my 19th year of teaching, so I kind of foresee going through this, looking at uh, – I have a goal that I would like to achieve, being the director of fine arts for East Baton Rouge Parish in charge of all the arts. But I can also see myself being in an assistant principal-style role, maybe a principalship role one day. But uh, – getting back into the classroom on this side of the desk, you know, has been interesting, you know, after my first several classes. So it's, uh, you know, eye opening and you start seeing these things in your own school. So it's, uh, it's, it's been great so far, but that's kind of see what I see the track for myself at the moment. Okay. Awesome. Uh, great. Glad that, uh, I, I worked at the, I was principal at Booker T Washington high school for the performing and visual arts in Dallas. I um, actually did two stints there, so I um, absolutely love the arts and, and music, and, uh, you know, if you ever decide you want to go towards the Dallas area, I can hook you up. I know all the good arts people there. I read your bio. I was impressed by that. <laughs> well, thank you. Hey, okay, who's up next? I'll go I'm next. Not. Okay. <laughs> you can go. Okay. Hi, I'm Amy Guillory. I teach in Lafayette Parish. This is my 12th year. I've always taught fifth grade. I've taught every subject. I've done reverse inclusion, which was made up by a principal. And I would like to eventually become an administrator. Assistant principal first, maybe principal in the long run. 
Awesome. Uh, just, you know, if you're thinking uh, towards the future, guys, uh, I read recently a statistic that said that over 50% of acting principals across the country can and will retire in the next five years. Um, so there's going to be a ton of openings. So I'm glad to see so many people that are thinking about that towards the future. It's definitely a huge need. Okay, Brandon, you want to go next? Yes, ma'am. I'm a um, middle school coach with fifth through eighth um, in PE. This is my fifth year teaching. I want to eventually become an assistant principal and a principal, and my goal is to retire as an uh, athletic administrator somewhere. Awesome. Um, my very best friend in the world, he is actually a head football coach in the college ranks, and that's exactly how he started, coaching middle school and kind of moved up over the ranks and became a athletic coordinator and football coach at a large high school, and now he's a head football coach in college, making way more than any of us could ever hope to make, probably. So glad to see you, Brandon. Okay, who's up next? I'll go. Okay. Um, I'm Jessica Kedry. I teach um, at Westgate in New Iberia. I live in Youngsville. I'm the English department director. I teach English 3 AP. English 3 on level, English 3 honors. I'm also the English 4 AP teacher. Wow. Um, and my son is leaving tomorrow as their last day. Um, oh, lucky you. <laughs> um, in the long run, I would like to do something with curriculum. Okay. That's my niche. Awesome. Great. AP, that's wonderful. Glad to have you, Jessica. Thanks. Hey, who's up next? I'll go. I'll go. Oh. Okay. Okay, my name is Chelsea Johnson. I am actually from Tallahassee, Florida. Um, I am currently a high school science teacher. I teach biology, physical science, and AP environmental science, and their AP exam is tomorrow. Yeah. Um, like the other high school um, teachers, our seniors' last day is Friday, so I'm super excited about that. Um, I, within the next, um, oh, I'm sorry, I also am the head girls basketball coach. Oh, wow. Um, so Super excited about where I am because I actually teach and coach at my alma mater. So, oh, cool. uh, yeah, so hopefully in the next, um, after the program, and uh, like somebody said earlier, just kind of trust in the process, I want to be uh, a principal of a school and um, retire, I hope to retire as a superintendent of Leon County, which is Tallahassee, Florida. Oh, God bless you. I would never want to be a superintendent in a thousand years, but good for you. So, you got to talk with Dr. Perry. He, he was the superintendent for many years in lots of places. He can give you all the inside scoop. Absolutely. Okay, who's up next? I'll go. Okay. Uh, my name is Amy Moss. I'm the instructional leader at a middle school in Lafayette Parish. Um, I work as part of the administrative team, so I work pretty closely with the principal and assistant principal. Um, I'm interested in becoming an assistant principal and at some point maybe work with curriculum on the district level. Um, and I have a two and three year old foster child who are oh, banging wow. on my bedroom door right now. So I'm hoping <laughs> they don't bust in at any moment. That's okay if they do. We'll just say hi to them and ooh and all about how cute they are. <laughs> so thank you. Good to see you, Amy. Who's up next? Hi, my name is Heather Burrell. I live in Natchitoches, Louisiana, also known as the City of Lights. Um, I just want to say happy Teachers Appreciation Week to everyone. Um, hope you've had a great week. Um, I, I'm currently um, the fourth and fifth grade unique teacher because I just don't like the word sped. Um, I'm the fourth and fifth grade unique teacher at Clutcherville Elementary, um, which is also a very um, small school in a rural area. Um, and I teach about 22 severe and profound um, kids with everything from um, so, uh, mild to severe uh, SLD and uh, intellectual disabilities. So um, my days are very interesting. Um, all of my kids, all 22, um, have health plans um, and also have behavior plans. So, um, and with this class, I'm just, I'm not really for sure where I'm headed. Um, Dr. Katrina Jordan at NSU um, was the one that pushed me to go into the master's degree program um, to look forward to doing some type of leadership position. So I'm excited about this class. Well, thanks, Heather, and thank you for what you do. That's one of the toughest jobs in the school, and, and oftentimes I think um, our teachers with our, our most severely 
uh, disabled students don't get the recognition they deserve. So thank you for what you do and, and the blessings you bring to those children. Dr. Johnson. Yes, ma'am. Hey, this is Noelle again. Listen, Ms. Smith, I'm hiring in Ascension <laughs> Parish for Law One teachers, and I'd be more than willing to take you on. <laughs> I love what you have to offer. Oh, very cool, Noelle. Thanks. Okay, so I've got some job offers going already. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, who's up next? I'll go. Okay. I don't know how to do this. Do I just no, talk? you're doing fine, Deborah. Just talk. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I am Debbie Reed. I work in Lafayette, Louisiana. Um, this is my 20th year in education, but I feel brand new this year because I am on the an inaugural faculty at a brand new school. Oh, wow. And it has been such an amazing experience to open a school, um, to help to build a department. And I've been really inspired by doing that. I've resisted going into administration um, for two decades now, but I've been really inspired by the people I work with and my two amazing administrators. And so they kind of inspired me to do it. So. Here I am. I'm not really sure what I want to do. Maybe something in policy, maybe um, a school principal, uh, you know, eventually. I'll just, I'm going to figure that out as I take the classes. Awesome. Welcome. We're glad to have you. Okay. We may, guys, I'm kind of watching the time too. We may not be able to get to everybody tonight. So just, you know, don't take offense if we don't get to you. We'll pick you guys up the next time. But um, just for the sake of time, because there's a couple things I want to go over with you since you've got some assignments and stuff. Let's go for maybe another four or five people. I'll go. Okay. Um, my name is Rebecca Gibbs. I teach gifted and talented. Um, my goal through this, oh, sorry, middle school, six or eight in the STEM program. My goal is to help new teachers when they're starting off because I feel like so many people go through the alternative cert and they get thrown to the wolves and there's nobody there to back them and then they leave the career field which they intend to join and love um, and they shouldn't hate their first year, they should love it. Oh, great point, Rebecca, thank you. You're preaching to the choir. Um, thanks for doing that because you know that we do oftentimes throw new teachers to the wolves and, and we do lose them completely. So thank you, I'm glad we've got people looking out for them. Okay. Who's up next? Hi, my name is Margie Kirkland. And I'm an instructional assistant at Nanceville High School. I want to say uh, good afternoon to everyone. Um, I just want you all to know that I have a, a BS degree in organizational management. My master's was in health administration. And I can relate to the young lady with the all cert um, in the crack, so to speak. And uh, I'm also an author of a book. And I'm promoting my new book, uh, Max and the Case of the Nasty Potato Chip. It's oh, found wow. on Amazon.com, yes. <laughs> I love your diverse background. That's awesome. <laughs> Check it out, okay? <laughs> Welcome, <Thank you>. Margie. <laughs> okay, let's do three more. Hey, I'm uh, Chris Gatlin from Alexandria, hey, Louisiana. I was hired 12 months. I'm in Holy Savior Menard. It's a private school in Alexandria. I was hired 12 months ago as a head football coach with no teaching in, uh, assignment. Then my principal left. And those of you that know about coaching, if the principals leave, it's usually not a very good experience to be the head coach with the new principal. So the guy came in, offered me the uh, dean of students. And so I'm now the dean of students, the head football coach. Somebody asked me what I did, so I had to make a list. I uh, handle behavior. I also counsel students. I meet with parents on a regular basis, which is a lot of fun if y'all haven't gotten to do that yet. <laughs> I, uh, I observe teachers, I run the SBLC and the response intervention program. So I went from basically having no responsibilities other than coaching to all that stuff piled on, but it's a lot of job security. So I'm, I guess I'm blessed with that. This is my 23rd year. I have retired from the public school and I hope to retire again soon <laughs> from whatever I'm doing. So good luck to everybody. Welcome Chris and, and bless you. I don't know when you sleep, let alone take classes, but glad you're here. I don't sleep much. I was going to say. <laughs> okay, two more. I'll go. Okay. My name is Carla Renter. I am a math teacher at North DeSoto High School. I teach advanced math and calculus. I also am the track coach, and I am um, a lead teacher in the TAP system. I am hoping from this class to be able to 
finish up my master's program and start off as an assistant principal, work my way up to principal and possibly a supervisor on the district level. Awesome. I'm impressed. Calculus teacher. So when you guys are taking, you know, if you take a stats class on down the road, remember Carla. She's going to be able to help y'all. <laughs> Welcome, Carla. Good to see you. Thank you. Okay, one more and then we'll um, do some talking and then um, we'll pick up with everybody else next week. I'll go last. Okay. Hey, Kel. My name is Kel. My name is Kel Broussard. I'm from uh, Youngsville, Louisiana. Uh, this is my ninth year uh, as a sixth grade social studies teacher. I have five children, seven and younger, and one on the way. <laughs> I have also been uh, inspired by a wonderful administration to uh, go back and get into a leadership role. So here I am. Uh, in the future, I look to um, hopefully uh, leadership roles as assistant or principal. Uh, future would be maybe district level. Future, future, possibly the state level in education. Awesome. Well, I um, bless you and your wife. Um, I cannot even imagine. That's like having um, just absolutely no free time whatsoever. <laughs> well, hang on, my, my computer just went wonky on me. Let me see what's going on. Okay, so um, like I said, if we didn't get to you tonight, um, not only with me as your instructor, um, but also with your classmates. Um, I have gone back and forth um, about one of the assignments, which is a group assignment. And, you know, I get mixed, that is the one thing I get mixed feedback. Some people love the group assignment, some people hate the group assignment. We are going to do a group assignment. Um, you know, part of the job work that we do in education and particularly in leadership should involve collaboration. And as the world is changing and we are having more and more online schools um, in pre-K through 12 education, uh, you know, there are ways to collaborate, even if you've got people from all over the state or even the country. So just be looking ahead and forward to that. Um, the other thing that I want you to do when you are collaborating is, you know, like Noel just reached out to somebody with a possible job offer. You know, education, and while we may all be in very different places physically, education is really a pretty small world. And um, the people that you are taking class with, you, you could run across them again in the future in your career or in your job or whatever. But these are the people that I want you to learn about and to help and support each other, whether it's through a job search um, or when you become an assistant principal. You know, you've got, uh, you know, Chris already who's in that role and, you know, and you just don't know how to handle a crazy parent, not that you would ever get those. Um, but, you know, Chris probably can give you some great pointers. So just... You know, we've got Noelle, who's an expert in special education. Everybody has so much they can, they can bring to the table. So this will become your virtual support group. Um, several years ago, I studied at Harvard during the summer, and there was a group of us that became really close. And, and even though we have all gone on to do very, very different things, um, we, still, we still get together once a month in a virtual meeting and just kind of talk about what's going on. And they have been my best resources and, and just, you know, sort of um, think buddies, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, just remember, I have never had an issue, but I do want to remind everybody we have to follow the LSUS Code of Conduct and the Honor Code. So, um, like I said, I don't expect any problems, your graduate students, but we do want to remind everybody. Um, also, too, when we do our Zoom meetings, discussion forums, et cetera, please be professional. Um, don't hog the conversation. And if you have something negative to say, just don't say it. You know, you can always message me privately. Uh, you know, I think everybody has my cell phone number. You can always text me, whatever you need to do if you've got a concern. Um, but remember, our forums, whether it's the news forum or the instructor virtual office, as well as the forums that you're posting in, are all public. Um, so just, you know, keep that in mind. Um, our Zoom meetings are optional. You're not required to be here every week. Um, you know, I spent 35 years as a practicing educator and uh, in all of those different roles. So I understand that life happens, school happens and all of that. Um, however, even if you can't be with us live, that's fine. I do record the meetings. Um, and so you are responsible for your information. Um, also remember too that, you know, I try to post things and I try to, you know, we'll see how my life goes this, this term, but I try to always post the modules um, early for you. In fact, I've already opened up the first two. 
Um, so if you are one of those that likes to work ahead, you are welcome to do that. And, you know, don't feel like you have to wait to turn in an assignment. Turn, as soon as you get it done, turn it in. Um, but if you have questions or whatever about them, um, you know, I'm also too, I'm not, look, I'm not here to fail anybody. Uh, you know, I don't worry about making sure that we have the bell curve for grades, et cetera. Um, so if you post an assignment and you don't like the way that you, you know, got your grade or whatever, just let me know. Uh, I'm more than happy to, to send it back and say, okay, let's try this again and walk you through it. Um, one of my, you know, the other thing I'll tell you too, and I used to do this as a principal, I have, you know, we all have our little pet peeves. So I'm going to share mine with you tonight. My name is officially on LSU's records, Tracy Fraley Johnson. Please do not call me Tracy Fraley. I am Tracy Johnson. I am Tracy Johnson according to the state of Texas where I got married. I am Tracy Johnson according to the Social Security Administration. LSU is the only people in the world that thought it was necessary for me to keep the name I worked really hard to get rid of. So that is a pet peeve. Um, so just please call me Tracy Johnson. Um, I am also a stickler for good writing and grammar. Um, my, I had a double major in special education and English as, a, as an undergrad student at the University of Texas. Um, so I'm not, you know, I, as people say, I grade hard. Yeah, I do. Um, you know, if you have misspellings and, you know, really bad grammar or whatever, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you for it. Um, so just remember you're professionals and this is graduate school and we are all teachers. So hopefully we'll do fine. Um, I worked in the real world, guys. I really do understand life happens. You know, there's times that you think you're going to get to go home at 430 and study and get your assignment in and all that. And then, um, you know, some crazy parent comes up or the school catches on fire or all of these other things and by the way those are all true those really have happened to me um and you can't get something turned in i understand i'm not gonna i'm not one of those that what well, the deadline was and you missed it just let me know what's going on all i ask is for communication um and you know even if you don't communicate when i go through and start writing if i see there's something missing i'll generally just email you and say hey is everything okay i noticed you didn't turn in your assignment um, so, you know, we have a, a grading policy that we share, but like I said, I've worked in the real world. I know what it's like to be a teacher and to try to have a family life, um, uh, particularly this time of year. So just communicate with me. Um, the other thing, too, is uh, we're really going to spend, as I said, a lot of time um, talking about things and more than anything by the end of this course not only do i want you to know the research and the theory i also want you to be able to apply what you have learned um, you know this is not a course where we're going to spend a lot of time talking about the theoretical i'll give you that as a foundation but at the end of the day i want you to be able to create a, a truly functional and useful instructional plan um, because again, you can walk in as an assistant principal with all the theory in the world, but if you don't know how to apply it and actually put it into use and practice, then you're not going to be successful. I would encourage you to look at Moodle early in the week. Um, I've had students in the past who wait until Sunday, and you know, I, I get it, I understand, but you know, assignments are due Sunday night. And, um, and then Moodle will go down and then they panic and freak out because they can't do what they need to. So, you know, look at it early in the week so you know what's coming up. You also um, should have access to the uh, complete assignment list so you kind of know what's coming in the future. Um, yes, there is a lot of reading. Uh, and yes, there is writing. Uh, but again, um, that is just so that we can make sure you have the foundation that's needed. Starting with next week, we're going to really get into uh, the meat of the um, course, and we're going to talk a lot about the CIA triad. Um, and so you'll hear me use that pretty frequently. It's very simple. It's just curriculum, instruction, and assessment. And literally, if you think about um, a triangle, um, you have curriculum at, at one point, you have instruction at another, and you have assessment at the third. And much like um, a table, if you were to have a three-legged table, it can actually stand. But if you miss one of those legs and you try to have a two-legged table, we all know that it's going to fall. And really, the whole idea behind that CIA triad is that curriculum, instruction, and assessment must all exist together. And if you don't have all three pieces, 
then you're not going to have the student achievement or the outcomes that you're wanting. We're also going to spend some time talking about next week the curriculum and its role in the schools, what instruction should look like as opposed to maybe what is actually going on. And then finally, we're also going to be talking about assessment. So we're going to be spending time looking at both formative assessment as well as summative assessment. And for good or bad, the role that all of our state and national assessments play in the work that we do. Um, so I'm going to teach you, hopefully by the end of the course, how to get success on the test without teaching to the test. Um, because there is a way to do that uh, and make learning fun and interactive and hopefully useful for our students. Um, we also will talk for a little bit about um, the history of how this work has evolved. And um, you will get, I guess, in some ways my bias, um, but really who has proven to be the best researchers around curriculum and instruction and when school districts and schools and teachers have applied this work, um, get the best results. So again, we're trying to give you, or my goal is to give you some really practical tools that you can use. You know, as a teacher in the classroom or if you're already an assistant principal or you're already a director of something, I want you to walk out of EDL 710 in seven weeks and say, you know what, gosh, I've got this that I can actually go and use tomorrow. And then you're going to have another piece or pieces that you can put in that file of for when I'm a principal someday, I've got the foundation pieces I need to move forward and go ahead. So with that all being said, let me see if there was anything else. Um, the other, I, I guess just some guiding principles that we're not going to go through completely, we'll talk more about next week, but when we're talking about and thinking about curriculum, instruction, and assessment, guys, it's all about sharing and sharing vision, sharing mission, sharing our goals, collaborating with others, um, using experts when necessary, but also really underscoring the absolute critical role that teachers play in the use, development, design, and implementation of curriculum and instruction. You know, um, I worked for a long time in a very large urban school district. I was with Dallas ISD. Um, and I also worked in the Irving Independent School District, um, also an urban district, but not quite as large as Dallas. Irving had about 35,000 students. Um, Dallas had about 160,000. And one of the things that always really disappointed me um, before I moved to central office, um, not that I fixed it, but, you know, um, was the fact that they would bring in all these curriculum experts to write the curriculum for teachers to use, like it was this cookbook um, that was going to fit the needs of 35,000 students or, God forbid, 160,000 students. And I always thought as a principal and as a teacher, how in the world do they know what my kids need? There's no way that some expert can possibly know the conditions my kids come to school in, what they face, what their background knowledge is, where they have gaps in learning, maybe where they're accelerated. They had no clue. So I was very proud of the fact that in both districts, we moved away from the experts developing curriculum, and we actually had teachers and schools developing curriculum. And so I don't, I, I, you know, I absolutely want to spend some time talking about how effective schools have a curriculum design process that makes teachers an integral piece to that and leads to the kind of student achievement that we expect and we need for our kids. So with that being said, um, I guess that's really kind of the, the main big rock for this. Um, so. I have some good news and some bad news for you. Um, if you're excited about this kind of work, and several of you said you were, you're gonna love this course and you're gonna love working in the curriculum field because it will never end. There is never going to be a time that you can say, this is the perfect curriculum and I'm done. Because kids change every year, assessments change, expectations change, everything changes. So curriculum, instruction and assessment is ongoing and you will never be completely done with it. Um, so with that being said, what burning questions do you guys have about anything, assignments or anything like that before we close out for the night? I'm trying to pull up the chats to make sure I haven't missed anybody. 
Dr. Johnson, yes. just wait, but there's only one writing, there's only one question, right? Yeah, um, thank you, Chris, that's a great, great question. Um, I'm gonna give you a ton of reading assignments, I'm just gonna be honest with you, because I want you to get through um, the two textbooks that we're using, because quite frankly, they're excellent. Um, they have lots and lots of stuff that you can use right now, and are sort of the, the standard um, being used by most my school systems. However, despite all that reading, I do not want dissertations from you guys. Um, there are 65 people in our class, and there is one of me. Um, so what I am asking you to do is respond to the question, and it's one response for each assignment. Does that make sense? So, you know, if you're reading two chapters in one book, three chapters in another book, and three articles that I've given you, respond to the single question using information from all of those. One of the most difficult things that we have to teach our children to do is to synthesize and summarize. And so you get to practice that art um, as a graduate student. Now, of course, you cannot cite every single thing. Um, but pull out what you think are the most salient points that really underscore your ideas and your opinions. Because again, this is not a regurgitation of the readings. Um, I've read all the materials, so I don't need you to, to regurgitate that back to me. I want you to think about the question and come up with your own ideas and thoughts that are supported by what you've read and learned. When you say using all of the, um, the sources, like the, I mean, everything, or you're just saying we're supposed to read them? I want you to read them, but it, like I said, guys, you know, it's, it, some people love this, some people it drives them crazy because it's not very, um, I hate to say structure because that's not what I mean. I guess it's not very didactic in the sense of, yeah, I want you to read everything. Am I going to give you a hundred question test or quiz to see if you remember all the details? No. I want you to get the gist of it and to understand the processes and procedures and then use that as a way, like I said, to support your idea or your thoughts about the weekly reflective question. And you know, and honestly, if you disagree completely with everything the research says, that's fine. You know, just back it up. Um, again, I'd, I'd be really interested to read that because that is research, but we'll see. <laughs> Stacey, did I answer your question? Yes, I just, like I, there were the, um the links that we looked at with the mission statements and all of that kind of stuff. I mean, I didn't see to use that, but I did look at it. So when we, when I respond, I didn't have to include all of those things. No, you don't have to. And, okay. and sometimes, um, thank you. And thanks for that clarification. I will give you readings and stuff that you may not use this week, but it's definitely going to be foundational or background knowledge and information for subsequent work. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Johnson. Yes. Um, I just have a quick question about the readings that we're doing this week in the two textbooks. Mm -hmm. in, um, in Moodle, it has for both books, chapters one and two, pages one through 23. So I, I don't have it with me. I know it applies to one book, but mm -hmm. in the other book, you know, the, the pages are off. So is it just chapter one or? I, yeah. I yeah, and thank you, because it depends on, quite honestly, if you are using the newest edition of the book or an older edition, or if you have an ebook, the numbering is a little bit different. So I would go more by the chapters um, than I would the exact page numbers. Um, so we are, we are going to do chapters one and two for yes. each book. Okay. Yes, ma'am, for this week. Mm -hmm. Okay. And guys, it's okay to read ahead. I, I know you're just dying to read these books, but you know, you are eventually going to read the whole thing. So if you read a little bit more than I've assigned, it's not like it's going to hurt you. Okay, any other questions, guys? Sorry, excuse me, I, I'm getting text messages from students, so I'm just kind of looking to see what's going on. Um, okay, well, if you guys don't have any other questions, um, first of all, take a deep breath and relax. I promise I'm not going to, you know, Ms. just Johnson. Yes. Can I ask you a question? This is just yeah. for the people who have, who have taken 720, so I guess. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, good. <laughs> okay, I guess you, you've probably seen the, um, the new thread about our book. Can you? Yes, <laughs> sorry. 
<laughs> that was probably, I probably wasn't as transparent as I should have been. Um, yes, and, and by the way, I am not the instructor for the course. I am just assisting because it's a brand new adjunct with us who you guys, I promise, are going to love. It's just we have had so many difficulties getting everything set for him. Um, the person who has been teaching 8720 told us literally a week ago that they weren't going to be able to teach the course. So if you guys probably all work in systems, uh, you know, getting a new person hired and getting them all of the credentialing they need um, is pretty hard to do in a week or less. So as a result of that, I've gone in and assisted. The textbook that the bookstore, which by the way, the bookstore does not exist anymore at LSUS. Um, we have closed the bookstore. So we have that as an additional complicating factor. Um, we're going with Barnes and Noble. We'll be handling all of our bookstore stuff in the future, but they're not on board yet. So right now we've got this gaping hole between HR and getting our new adjunct, all the credentials he needs to get into the systems to do the work. And we don't have a bookstore. So the textbook that was posted was used by previous instructors. Um, we are trying to move away from those $100 plus textbooks and use more practical sort of handbooks. So for example, like you guys know in this class, if you went to Amazon and you probably spent no more than $20 for your two textbooks. The textbooks that Dr. Wood, the instructor for 8720 has chosen are also found on Amazon. And quite honestly, if you have a professional library at your school or in your parish, I would almost guarantee you those books are there. Um, so we're, like I said, or you even go to your public library, we're trying to reduce the cost. For those students who bought that unwieldy, big, huge textbook for 8720, from every source that I've been able to identify, you can return the book. So I would encourage you to return the book and, um, you know, do some of those free resources, particularly like if your school has an ASCD um, membership, you can get the books for the 8720 free of charge. If for some reason you can't return the book and it's just impossible to buy the books for 8720, just message or email me privately. Um, just so we keep everybody, you know, not getting a thousand emails. Um, and we will figure something out for you because some of those books, I think we can get you free access through my institutional membership. So yeah, I'm sorry. It's just been a, um, interesting opportunity to problem solve. Oh, well, thank you. That answers the question. All right. Thank thanks, Brandon. I appreciate it. Okay. okay I have a question or a comment about that. Yes, ma'am. Based on what he posted, we have to read 152 pages in one week. No, actually, you have until May 20th, because I'll be honest with you, I posted that um, because okay. he doesn't have access. Um, so I'm just trying to get him up and running. Um, and even if you don't read 120 pages by May 20th, uh, because if you'll notice the deadline was extended, again, you have one reflective question that covers the readings and it really is your opinion backed up by some research. So you guys are smart students. Um, I know I got through my master's degree with not always reading everything I was supposed to read and I did just fine. <laughs> so okay, use your I'll best, just, use your best inferencing skills. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I promise ED720 will get much, much better. Um, like I said, we are just struggling right now with some of the technical stuff. Um, but Mr. Uh, Dr. Wood and I are meeting on Friday, and we're going to sit down and triage it. So like I said, I think you'll see things get a whole lot better. And quite honestly, at ED722, guys, the handbook, it's just templates. You know, so you've got the understanding by design book, and then you have the understanding by design handbook or something like that. It is nothing but templates. There's really not, I mean, once you read the first 25 or 27 pages, that's the introduction, there's nothing else to read. It's just like, here, use this form. Here, you could use that form um, just to make life easier. So really, it sounds like a lot with three textbooks, but the second book, is there is absolutely no, nothing to read. So those books are posted now? They are posted. They're in the syllabus. And I, again, I would encourage you to go to Amazon. Um, you know, you can get them dirt cheap. Um, I got my copies for less than $20. No, mine was about $18 for all three books. 
I found one of the books for a dollar twenty-five. Do um, you know when his meetings are going to be? I'm not sure um, yet because not only do we have to get him set up with a Zoom account, um, we try to spread these out. So Dr. Perry and I have Wednesday nights, so that leaves him to have Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday, um, unless y'all really want a Friday or Saturday meeting, but I'm pretty sure we don't. So we don't have one this week then? No, not yet. Like I said, just bear with us, and that's why we didn't have anything really do other than the tell us who you are, get acquainted kind of stuff. The first week, um, nothing else is due until um, the 20th. And I okay. see somebody, yes, the bookstore will still take returns um, because it's actually, they've outsourced that piece, that piece to Barnes & Noble. We just don't have a physical bookstore right now in LSUS. You guys, anything else? Okay, have a great Mother's Day weekend and teachers, um, all of you that are in the classroom or working in those roles, happy teacher appreciation. Uh, you know, I always said the most important people when I was a principal on campus was not the students and it wasn't the administrators, it was the teachers. So thank you guys for the work that y'all do um, and have a great night. And if you're off to see Dr. Perry, tell him I said hello. Okay, talk to y'all soon.